Hello and welcome designers to an Onshape tutorial. Today we're going to be covering the basics of how to use Onshape inside Google Chrome. I would recommend that you use Onshape on Google Chrome whether you're on your iPad or on a desktop or laptop because the tools that we explore today will be the same if you're following along with my video. The iPad app is a little bit limited in that some of the tools need extra clicks and moves around here and there in the app that could get confusing. So it is highly recommended that you open up Onshape inside Google Chrome on your iPad or on your laptop. Once you have signed in and made an account with Onshape, which is free, you should come to a screen that looks like this. This is your homepage, as it were, for your Onshape account. And we're going to be starting off from here. Please make sure that you're at this point. So once you're logged into Onshape, the first thing you need to do is click Create up here at the top left and then document. Give the title for your document. I'm going to say Team Vita F1 Car and click OK. Give it a moment and your stage will open up in Onshape. OK, so our document is ready to start 3D modeling and as you can see there is this wacky kind of geometric shape in the center of your Onshape. What you're looking at are the axes or planes in 3D. If I hover over this top plane. You can think of this plane more like the floor. It's like the floor you're standing on. And if I hover on this plane, which is labeled as front, think of this like a wall that's facing towards you and to the left. And if I hover over this plane, this is called right. Again, another wall and it's facing to the right. Why is this here? Well, just like in Fusion 360, in on shape, when you want to create something in 3D, you have to draw the shape in 2D first and then pull that shape to make it 3D. And these axes are really helpful for having a surface to draw on. Now there are a few other steps to drawing sketches, but we're going to start off by drawing on one of these axes. And I will start off by drawing on the floor. It's just something I prefer to draw on. It's easier to understand. One more thing before we get started. There is a cube here that you can left click and drag to a position that you feel more comfortable with. And if you right click and drag, you can rotate around the workspace. It's starting to rotate and it's kind of getting away from me. Always use this cube here in the corner to recenter my view. So for example, if I click this corner here, I get back to this view and I can click the other corner. Keep clicking that corner and I'm back to where I was. So this cube is very helpful for navigating around and making sure that you don't start flying off in every different direction. You can also have extra view modes from this little cube underneath the view cube. You can set some special views when you're modeling and we'll explore this a little bit more later. So that is the view cube and that's how you navigate and rotate your view while you're drawing. When I click the corner here, I call that my home view. I like to have a point that I always come back to while I'm drawing so that I don't get lost in my design. All right, so we're going to get started in designing our F1 in schools car block. This will be part one of the series. In this video, we're going to learn how to create a sketch on a plane or a surface and then how to extrude the sketch to create a 3D object. In addition to that, we're going to be learning how to create a sketch with dimensions and how to change dimensions after you've already done a sketch or extruded it into a 3D object. The first thing we're going to do is create a rectangle on our floor plane right here. So I'm going to go to the sketch button at the top here and click it once. And it will open a sketch dialog box. And as you can see, the word sketch is in red. That is because I haven't chosen a surface or plane to draw on. So it registers it as a mistake or an error. So in order to rectify that, I'm going to click the top plane. I'm going to hover over it and I'm going to click it. And as you can see, we have a canvas that shows up and it says sketch one here. So we are ready to draw on this field here that has shown up. And we are going to be drawing on the floor plane. And our sketch one word has become black, not red. Now, we are inside sketch mode. So the tools at the top here have changed. 
These are all the tools that you can use to draw things. The first one we're going to be choosing today is the center point rectangle. I'm going to hover over the very center of all my axes. I'm going to click once and I'm going to drag out. And what I'm drawing here is one face of the F1 block. Now the measurements are not exactly correct, but I'm just going to click it once. And as you can see, this number has now got a white box around it. So I can start typing 233 and I'm going to put in millimeters. It's very important that you put mm in. Otherwise, you might consider it as inches. So we are designating that these are in mm by typing mm. So the first number is 233 mm. I'm going to push enter and it will automatically go to the next number. It's already highlighted. You don't need to click it. And I'm just going to straight away type 65 mm. That's the width of the F1 block and I'm going to push enter. So now I've created a sketch with specific dimensions and later on I will show you how you can change the dimensions if you've done something wrong or you just want to tweak your 3D model. But for now I'm happy with my sketch. It's got the correct width of 65 mm and the correct length of 233 mm. So I'm going to click the green check mark and come out of sketch mode. So now the tools at the top have changed and these tools are for editing 3D objects. And the first one is what we'll be using today and that's called the extrude tool. This extrude tool is found in every single 3D program. So I'm going to click the extrude tool. It's gone red because it doesn't know what sketch I want to extrude. So I'm going to click the sketch that I just drew here by hovering over it and clicking once. Now you can see it's automatically trying to do an extrude for me at 25 mm. Right now I can change this number and it will be 50 mm for the F1 block. Remember, always type in mm. And take note that there are different modes that you can choose here on how this object extrudes. We'll talk about this in a little bit. So for now, click the green tick. Great. Now our F1 block is in the proper dimensions and ready to go. Let's rotate and have a look. Fantastic. I'm going to click the corner here as usual. I always like to go home and I like to have it at this view. Before we move on any further, I wanted to bring your attention to the left side here where you see a menu. This is another way that you can navigate and select different parts of the design that you've been working on so far. We've created a sketch and we've extruded that sketch and as you can see right here if I hover over these this is what I have done so far. Let's talk about fixing a dimension that you might have put in wrong or you want to change. In order to change dimensions we have to go back into the original sketch where we put the dimensions in. So a fast way to do that is using the left menu. If I right click sketch 1 and go to edit it will take me back into that original sketch I drew. So from here, you can hover over one of the dimensions and double click, and you can change the dimension. So I'm going to go 433 mm, just for example, and push enter. And now the dimensions have updated. Okay, so that's one way that you can go back and change dimensions. So I'm going to undo and go back to the original correct length and click the green check mark. Let's move on further. The F1 in schools car block has a circular cutout on the back face of the car where you'd put the CO2 canister to fire during the race. We need to cut out that circle. That circle is going to happen on this face. So I'm establishing now that this is the back face of my car. Earlier we drew a sketch on the plane that is known as top. Now I'm going to show you how to draw a sketch on a face on an actual object. Let's go to sketch up here at the top and click sketch. It's red now because it doesn't know where to draw. This time instead of choosing one of the planes or axes, I'm going to choose this face. And now the sketch field is in line with this face. Before I start drawing, you have to take note that you always want to be looking head-on on what you're drawing, looking at it in a flat perspective. 
So in order for me to do that, I'm going to come to the cube here and I'm going to click right. Now I'm looking flat on like I'm drawing on a sheet of paper. I know I need to draw a circle here that I'm going to extrude later, but the circle needs to be in a precise spot on the back of this car. That is F1 regulation. So I'm going to click the line tool and because we originally created this object as a center rectangle, it is nicely centered along all our axes and you can see that with these blue lines. So I'm going to click right here on this blue line, click once, and I'm going to drag down. As you can see, it's creating a dashed line for me and it's locking me in that axis. I'm going to click one more time and before I push anything, I'm going to type in 21mm and push enter. I'm happy with that line and what I've done here is drawn a line to help me find the center point of the circle that I need to draw. Now the line wants to continue being drawn so a quick way to stop this line being drawn is to push escape. Now I'm free and I can continue drawing the line or I can change to another tool and continue drawing the line but in this case I just need this as an indication where my circle will go. Now I'm going to choose the circle tool I'm going to hover over that point I just determined. I'm going to click once, drag out, click again, and type in 18mm and push enter. Great. I have a circle with the right dimension for the CO2 canister. I'm going to click the green check mark, come back out of sketch mode, go to my home view as usual, come to extrude at the top here, choose the circle. Be very careful to make sure that it's highlighted first so you know you're selecting the correct sketch. And as you can see, it is trying to extrude and add to the object. The first thing I'm going to do is grab this arrow, click and drag and drag it into the object. Now you can see a red color has shown up. This is indicating that the extrude is now intersecting with my original block object. Let's have a look at the extrude box now. There's a few options that we can choose to have this extrusion interact with the block. I want to remove the material from inside this block, so I'm going to choose Remove. And look at that, right there you can see it's actually visualizing that there is a hole now because it is removing the material. And the distance it must go in is 52 millimeter. And click the green check mark. Let's rotate and have a look. And yes, indeed, it has cut a circle out of the back of the car. All right, so we have just one last task to do to finish up our part one for the F1 block tutorial. And that is to cut out the groove at the bottom of the block for the wire under the car. So just like before, we're going to create a new sketch, click on this face, orient our view to the right. So we're looking flat on. And then we're going to choose the center point rectangle tool. We're going to come right here to our center axis and click this point. So we are directly in the middle of the width of our block. Click once, drag out, click again. And for the width of this sketch, it is six millimeters. Push enter. And for the height, we are going to put 12 millimeters. This is to ensure that our sketch is clearing enough of the bottom of the block and you'll see why in a second. That looks good so I'm going to click the green check mark, go back to my home view. I'm going to zoom in just a little bit to help me select this sketch easier. Click the extrude button, select the sketch and if you notice it's actually split our sketch along the line of our block so you just have to click the next one above it as well to get both of them zoom out, grab the white arrow and pull it all the way across the block until you see it on this side. Then in the extrude choose remove. Because we have purposely made this rectangle taller and extremely long we are sure to cut a nice even groove all the way through this block. So push the green check mark and let's rotate with the right click and check and there we go. Our groove for the F1 wire is two specifications. Now there's just one last thing we have to do to wrap up this F1 block and that requires a little bit of explanation. 
Currently, the block is 223 millimeters long. It's actually longer than the car is allowed to be. In F1, the length of the car can be a max of 210 millimeters. That means this block is too long. But why did I ask you to do this block at 223? The reason being is, at one side of this block, it needs to attach into the jig that is used in the CNC machine. It would be good practice to actually mark out where that line is so that we know exactly where the front of our car is on this block. Let's get that line marked out. I'm going to start with a new sketch. I'm going to choose this face. I'm going to change my view to front, so I'm drawing flat on. I'm going to use the regular corner rectangle. I'm going to start at this top corner, which is the back of my car. I know this because this is where the circle cutout is for the canister. I'm going to click once. I'm going to drag this box roughly to where I want it, as long as it's as tall as my block. I'm going to click once. For the length measurement, as I said before, it is 210 mm. That's the max of the car. And then I'm going to push enter. And this measurement is already correct. It's 50 mm. So I'm going to push enter. And I'm going to click the green check mark for this sketch. Let's go back to home view. Now I'm not going to extrude this sketch. This sketch is just to show me that actually this highlighted section here is the length of the car. And this section right here is where it attaches into the machine for CNC. And that's it. That completes part one tutorial of the F1 block. In the next part, we'll be learning how to cut this block into the shape of the car using the different axes, uh, front axes, right axes, and the top axes. Thank you very much for following along. Good luck.